overtime. Hey, welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and in my last couple of videos, Keen observers would have noticed a, uh, a game in the background that I haven't talked about yet. I haven't announced yet. You know, I've been picking up so many arcade machines for restoration projects that I just can't effectively hide all of them in the background anymore. So uh, anyway, there's you know a number of machines that I am still actively looking for. Uh, if you go to VAPS, which is the Vintage Arcade Preservation Society website, uh, I'll put a link to my profile down in the description. Uh, you'll see the, the list of games that I am looking for. And so one day I was uh, checking Facebook Marketplace, which is something that I do regularly. And by regularly, I mean uh, obsessively. And uh, something interesting popped up. I'll, I'll show you a picture of it here. And this is a, a, a do run run uh, cocktail cabinet, right? And, you know, so I'm thinking, hey, you know, do run run is kind of an interesting game. It's not something that, you know, comes up that, that frequently. Uh, but I looked, you know, a little bit closer, and I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, Do Run Run was never a dedicated machine and, and didn't come in a, in a cocktail or anything like that. So what was this cabinet originally? And I looked at the control panel and uh, thought that was really interesting, right? Joystick and a single button uh, labeled Pump. So what game is that, right? Uh, and maybe you've guessed it, but that this was a Dig Dug cabinet originally. This was originally an Atari Dig Dug cocktail machine, uh, and Dig Dug is a game that's on my my wish list. Uh, I'll show another picture here of what you know the Dig Dug cocktail originally looked like. So you know the artwork's been removed and and whatever, but yeah, this was originally a Dig Dug. So reach out to the seller. You know, super, super nice guy. I guess the game had been listed for a while, and, and he had some, you know, tire kickers, but nobody that had committed to it. So, you know, we chatted a little bit and worked out a great deal. So, um, yeah, why don't we uh, get in the truck, head out on the road, and go pick up this Atari Dig Dug cocktail machine that's been converted to a Do Run Run. Let's go! All right, and here's the converted Dig Dug cocktail, safe and sound at home in the garage. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty, pretty good. And hopefully it won't be too much work to get this back to uh, a somewhat original Dig Dug. Um, you know, from the outside, it does have the uh, control panel overlays and controls from both sides. So you know, um, four-way leaf joystick uh, there in the middle and a single button labeled pump on either side. I'm guessing from this discoloration, it must have had some sort of sticker uh, to change the label for the do run run conversion. And if we come over to the player one side over here, uh, we see we have the player one uh, controls here as well. Again, uh, with the joystick and the buttons. Um, there's a little bit of wear, but honestly, it's it's not too bad. Uh, down here, we have the uh, dual coin mech uh, in decent shape, and then there's a coin bucket down there on the bottom. And uh, yeah, really uh, looking pretty good. You know, the biggest thing that we're going to have to do cosmetically, obviously, is uh, change up the uh, Do Run Run uh, artwork. Um, so this actually does look pretty good. I don't know if this was if this kit was made as a conversion kit for Dig Dug cocktails, you know, obviously Dig Dug was a you know huge hit for Atari. They sold, I don't know, we'll ask Professor Pac-Man to look up, you know, how many tens of thousands of upright uh, Dig Dug cabinets were sold. But I don't think there were that many uh, cocktails. Um, so it's interesting to me if, if this was sold by Universal as a conversion kit specifically for uh, Dig Dug, it almost looks too good of a fit, right? And it's got the right controls and the right 
you know, the right joystick and the right buttons for Do Run Run. Uh, but it actually looks, you know, pretty nice as a, as a conversion, you know, with the uh, Do Run Run sort of, you know, half circle, semicircle artwork on either side. And then we have uh, on the player one side, we have some instructions on both the left and right uh, for how to play. And just like we've got the one player and two player start buttons down there, the, the sort of typical Atari Volcano cone buttons, uh, we even have a one and two player start uh, sticker here for uh, Do Run Run with Mr. Do right there. So originally, uh, this generation of Atari cocktails had a really sort of nice uh, uh, underlay uh, for the uh, underneath the cocktail glass. Maybe I'll show a picture of it uh, uh, here. Uh, nobody's actually reproducing this artwork right now, but there is a high resolution scan of it. So I can probably figure out some way to get it printed, whether I, you know, do it myself at a local print shop or, you know, find some reproduction, arcade artwork reproduction shop uh, willing to do a run. And it sort of, you know, covers the entire, you know, glass other than the cutout for the uh, control panel and obviously for the monitor it kind of fills in the rest and it's sort of white on either side. And the only thing that'll be a little bit tricky is there's kind of a transparent piece that goes uh, underneath here, sort of in this thin strip between the control panel cutout and the monitor. And it, it's like clear and it has uh, copyright for Atari. So maybe I even skip that and just do it in two pieces on either side and just ignore the transparent piece in the middle. That could be a viable option. And so that's pretty much what we've got on the outside. There's also a sticker or business card here for, I'm assuming uh, Derek Music Company in Hinton, West Virginia was an operator uh, of this. And often, you know, I see the lack of a area code here for the local number as um, perhaps being an indication of time frame. So, you know, anything by the 2000s really is gonna have uh, an area code even for local numbers given cell phones and that sort of thing. So we come down here, we do have a uh, sticker. It's actually from the conversion. So it says license to universal number 502706 for do run run. And I'm not, this is my, actually the first anything I've owned from Universal. So I'm assuming that uh, serial number is from all Universal games because I can't imagine they made half a million uh, Do Run runs. Maybe Mr. Do's, the original Mr. Do, you see those all the time, but not so much uh, the Do Run run, I think is the uh, fourth in the uh, Mr. Do series. Coming back over here to the Player 2 side, um, we've got a little uh, warning sticker here uh, underneath the... Uh, the player two control panel, but uh, that's pretty typical for Atari. And really not anything over here. We've got the locks uh, to open up the cocktail lid, but that's about it. This is a sort of access panel. Oh, that is an access panel for getting into the internals. And uh, yeah, um, this is at the lowest level. You can adjust the height of most cocktail machines and this is at the lowest level. So we'll probably bring it up at some point, but you know, being like this kind of makes it easier for storage and uh, transport. So why don't we get set up on the tripod and we'll open this sucker up. Okay, I've got a key for the cabinet down here in the coin box and it uh, has a little label on it that says uh, do run run cocktail table. Um, there should be actually two lock mechanisms holding the, uh, the lid down, but uh, one of the locks is missing, so we will repair that at some point. And there we go. Lift up the lid and take a look at what's going on in here. So originally, obviously, Dig Dug is a vertically oriented game. The monitor should be vertically oriented, uh, but it's been rotated here for uh, Do Run Run, which is, you know, as you can see, a horizontal orientation game. So we're gonna have to rotate the, uh, the monitor back. And uh, yeah, let's uh, also see what we got here. Here is the uh, game board uh, right there. Uh, Do Run Run, and I think all the Mr. Do games use a um, uh, universal, as in the company, uh, pinout and wiring harness. Not universal as you know, shared across all games, but um, it's not a JAMA game, so that's important, an important dis distinction. So we can see the wiring here. This is you know, not the original uh, Atari wiring, but from uh, the Do Run Run conversion kit. Uh, like we got the speaker there and it looks like this is a uh, audio amp uh, board with a volume knob, I'm assuming. Uh, and again, we can see the monitor has been rotated here. And in order to do that, uh, 
it looks like they actually cut the monitor frame a little bit. So you can see over here, there's sort of this handle uh, to help you pull the monitor uh, up and out. And over here, that handle has been mostly removed, mostly cut. And uh, it's actually written in Sharpie. It says danger sharp. And uh, I can kind of see these edges leave a little bit uh, to be desired. This little uh, piece right here actually is what holds that lower access panel uh, in place. So we'll have to pull that and remove that in order to um, access uh, the internals of the cabinet. And I'm guessing this was sort of cut to allow this piece to move. Otherwise, it would be blocked by that sort of handle uh, on the frame. So we'll figure out. And it looks also like there was some uh, wood removed here, maybe again for mounting. And I see a screw hole on this side. So we'll figure out how to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, rotate the, um, the monitor and uh, get that back into shape. We see a manufacturing number here of 03383, um, and then another one over here of 129. So who knows which of these, if either of them was a uh, Atari serial number of any, of any kind. But, um, uh, and up here we have the, um, the cardboard bezel uh, for the cocktail monitor. Looks like it was rotated and, and repaired with duct tape and electrical tape. So we'll rotate that back and sort of figure out what we need to do to get that looking uh, nice again. And uh, we've got one of the hooks here uh, also is missing uh, for the lock mechanism. So we'll have to figure out a way to redo uh, that. So why don't we take a look, a uh, closer look at what's going on inside the game. Obviously the coin mechs down there look okay. Uh, but I want to see what's happening with the, uh, the monitor and the, uh, you know, harness and, and power supply and everything. And let me actually get uh, an even lower uh, tripod to uh, help take a closer look. All right, now we've got a real ground level look at what's going on. We can see what we're dealing with. So right off the bat, I'm um, looking at the power cord here. And uh, obviously the grounding pin has been removed and we've got some electrical tape. So we'll be repairing that with a new plug before uh, we turn this thing on. So. I'm gonna pull the sort of retaining uh, bar from the cabinet and then this access uh, panel should come loose and falls right out. And you can see the sort of little uh, bracket that uh, helps hold it in place. And again, some sort of manufacturing number here, but uh, three, no, it doesn't match any of the other numbers we've seen uh, so far. And uh, yeah, we can sort of see what's going on Inside the cabinet here, uh, we have the game circuit board on the left, uh, the neck and chassis of the monitor right here. This looks like a Geo 7 FBO 13 inch. We have a switching power supply has been installed. That's sort of a, a cover for uh, usually like a distribution block and like the power switch. Um, and we see the power going to the monitor. And looking around over here, uh, obviously the harness and we see I think these are the uh, the video signal cables that have been spliced in with electrical tape so we'll be fixing that up um, but uh, do you see what I see or maybe I should say do you not see what I don't see what's missing uh, <laughs> why don't I actually um, disconnect this monitor uh, here uh, so we can pull that out and again, take a closer look. So I'm going to reach in here and disconnect the monitor power. Sort of standard, standard power uh, clip. There we go. And we have our video and sync wires. And I'm kind of just going by feel here. Uh, that's the sync. And that's the video signal. So we'll drop these down, get them out of the way. And uh, <laughs> I think that's the only thing holding this monitor in. So let me pull this thing out. Be very careful with these sharp edges. All right, the monitor's free and clear and up on the workbench. And uh, let's see get a bird's eye view now of inside the cabinet. So again, circuit board there on the right, switching power supply, harness. What are we missing? What's not here? <laughs> what 
What needs to be in this cabinet in order to power this monitor? Again, this is a Geo 7 FBO. Here we go. We can see the Electrohome sticker there. And it'll say it right here, Geo 7 FBO, manufactured April 1980. Oh, we do have a Atari style serial number here of 01199. Doesn't necessarily mean this you know, monitor came from uh, this cabinet originally, but yeah, looks like it's okay. And I've seen it working. So I know we've got a working monitor at the very least, but that, <laughs> that makes me even more shocked because again, what's not in here? What needs to be in here that's not in here? An isolation transformer. <laughs> there's no ISO in this thing. Oh, there's some do run run stickers down there. I think those fell off maybe some of the, the EEPROMs, but uh, there needs to be an ISO in this cabinet and there's no ISO in here. So before we turn this thing on, I'm gonna have to hook up my uh, little compact portable monitor power supply thing because it is not safe to operate this monitor without an isolation transformer, it can really damage the monitor and you'll have all kinds of issues. So yeah, maybe, is that why the, <laughs> the, the wire, the plug, uh, the, the grounding plug on the, uh, the power plug was cut? Is that, was that an operator thinking that that was a way to, you know, create an isolation or isolate the AC power? I don't know. So, uh, yeah, why don't we go ahead and uh, repair the power plug. We'll put a new uh, grounded plug on and um, we'll hook up the um, uh, isolation uh, test bench power supply uh, thing that I, you've seen me make in a previous video. And uh, maybe at that point, uh, we'll be ready to safely power this thing on and um, see what we got. All right, you've probably seen me do this before, but sometimes uh, it's good to show the basics. Uh, not everyone is necessary, uh, necessarily familiar with them. And, uh, you know, it's just good to sort of, you know, kind of double check and make sure we know what we're doing all the time. So here's the plug that we want to uh, replace. The cord itself looks okay, right? I don't see any nicks or, or you know, uh, issues or anything. So I'm going to re remove the uh, electrical tape that's kind of covering things up here and see what we're dealing with. Uh, often these, you know, and it's not at all difficult to replace a, uh, a plug. Um, let's see, uh, we can kind of cut it off here. All right. And we've got our um, hot, neutral, and ground Boards. I'm going to cut the this extra insulation off, which is always tricky because this is like a nylon material that doesn't want to cut really well all the time. Right? And we might need to add a bit more slack to the wires here, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it momentarily. All right. And, uh, for the replacements, you can get these anywhere. Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, Target. Uh, I, I've been doing so many of them that I'm <laughs> now buying them by the, uh, by the case. Uh, so this is meant to be a replacement three prong uh, plug and it just opens up with a screwdriver, which I forgot to grab. Okay. We open this up just with a screwdriver. Don't lose this screw. And we, again, we have our uh, neutral, or uh, <laughs> green is ground, uh, gold is hot, and silver is neutral. And my OCD compelled me to double check that. And yeah, the, uh, the gold or the brass color uh, uh, screw here is for the hot or black wire. And the silver uh, colored uh, screw here is for the neutral or white wire. You don't want to mix those up. So I'm just going to Loosen these a little bit so that we have some room to work with. All three, and then the screw just dropped that holds the whole thing together. So again, don't wanna lose that. We'll loosen these up. We will strip a little bit of the wire remaining on the power cord, and we'll uh, basically tie them together. You know, no soldering or anything required for this. So let's see if I'll have enough slack uh, to do what I wanna do, probably. So 
let's strip this. Actually, stripping it might be the difficult part with the automatic stripper because I don't have a ton of room. So let me see if I can use the old uh, <laughs> conventional stripper. This is probably 14, right? So if you're down here. Right, yeah, that looks okay. Actually, did I take? Yeah, I took a bunch of the uh, the wiring off with it. So let's do that. Redo that entirely. I couldn't get away with minimizing the uh, amount of wire I was stripping. So we cut the whole thing again. We'll start fresh. I don't know if I can get this in to strip it like that, but uh, let me grab my utility knife. And we'll strip it that way, or at least start stripping the uh, the outer insulation that way. And of course, I cut the ground, so we're chipping away at the uh, <laughs> length of this cord here. Let me try to get in with my edge side cutters here. So we start it like this. And I cut the wire again. You see that? I cut the neutral. My goodness. My goodness. Let me do this off camera real quick. Just as I'm getting frustrated. All right, I think I got it now. Got those wires stripped back. Everything looks good. I uh, screwed them onto the terminals inside of the replacement plug. And I think we are ready to close this thing up. So we'll just Feed things around here. Close the other half. We got lined up. Okay, hold it closed. Grab my screwdriver and tighten it up. There we go. Nice replacement plug. No problem. Anybody, anybody can do this. Now, <laughs> another thing I noticed when I was sort of testing the continuity of all this stuff is uh, there was another problem. Uh, so you remember there was this, uh, this cover uh, like this uh, that originally would have covered sort of where the, uh, the plug goes. And you can see that hole in the bottom there and there's no, there's no plug, there's no switch. I mean, there's no switch for this cabinet. It's been removed. So there's that little kind of uh, distribution block like a two, two spot, two wire distribution block down there where they're just splitting the AC coming from the power plug. Let me see if I can give you a better look. The AC from the power plug is being split uh, <laughs> straight from the wall onto that monitor uh, power uh, connector. So we're getting, you know, AC directly from the wall, directly to the monitor. Big no-no, needs to go through an isolation transformer. The other thing was, uh, that not only was the neutral or uh, the ground plug uh, cut off of the uh, the power plug, um, the neutral also wasn't running to the uh, the switching power supply. It was just cut off on the inside too. So you see that uh, wire nut there. I added another length of green wire and I ran that uh, coming in from the power cable uh, to the field ground field ground lug on the uh, switching power supply. So, um, one other thing I noticed is uh, this bracket, this wooden piece that was uh, holding uh, the monitor up uh, was sort of coming loose. I've screwed it in place. I thought about gluing it and screwing it to really make it nice and secure, uh, but I tried dry fitting the monitor sort of back in the correct vertical orientation for Dig Dug, and these are not uh, original. And it looks like there were uh, other pieces of wood here that were uh, originally screwed or bolted onto this cross piece and uh, so I'll get some, some more wood to uh, when I eventually do rotate it. And yeah, also I noticed that the, the cabinet is really mostly made of um, particle board, maybe a little bit of plywood. And these are like hardwood, uh, just solid hardwood, um, you know, blocks here. So I think, uh, like I said, I tested uh, continuity or, uh, and um, that new replacement plug is good to go. So I think... Uh, I think we're ready to uh, put everything back together. Um, one thing actually I should do is 
even though I've seen this, let me try getting the small tripod on, even though I've seen this game working, again, both in the listing and the uh, at the seller's place uh, pickup, you can never be too sure. And I'd like to check the uh, voltage on the uh, switching power supply. So let's come in here like this and see if I can do this. Uh, <laughs> you're seeing what I'm doing. These wires are in the way. Okay. And uh, so uh, it looks like the uh, Mr. Do PCB only uses, um, uh, what is that, plus 5 and plus 12. It doesn't use the negative 5. So we can test uh, what the voltage is um, on it. So I'm going to do that before I put the monitor into the cabinet just to give myself um, some room. So let me grab my multimeter. And again, this cabinet doesn't have a switch. So as soon as we plug it in, uh, it'll be on. So let me see if I can set this up in a way where you'll be able to see what's happening. Okay. Uh, you should be able to see that. And we grab our, we untangle our leads. And uh, why don't we clip uh, the black one onto ground. If I can manage to do that. Okay. Then we should be able to test. What is that? Uh, okay, that orange wire is the plus five. This is the ground uh, for the uh, harness, and this is the plus 12. So we should be able to. Can you even see that now? No, that creates glare. All right, bear with me. Let's plug the having it in. This should power right up. Here we go. We hear the PCB playing. And let's see. Uh, that plus five is, what is that? Whoa. That can't be right. What the heck is going on here? Ten volts? Seventeen volts? Does that make any sense? How does that make any sense? Am I doing something wrong? Yes, I'm doing something wrong. Good Lord, Charlie. That's ground. Why don't you guys tell me I hit it? Connected on the wrong thing. Let me unplug this and connect it the right way. Oh my goodness. All of you are watching. I had my, I was at a weird angle. Uh, yeah, that's 12, that's five, that's ground. And those are both ground. So I should be able to maybe grab. All right, we'll try that. Goodness gracious. Okay, plug them back in. Okay, let's see. Let's see. And 12 is 12.48. And 5 is 5.191. Let me turn that down uh, just a hair. Um, let's see. We do this like so. You're not going to be able to see, but. There we go. And we'll get that too. About 5.1. So that should be good. And uh, yeah, if you can see. Here, now I'm at 5.099 and 12.26. So uh, I think we should be good to turn this off and just by unplugging it, we'll put the monitor uh, into the cabinet. Uh, and remember, we are not going to connect the monitor 
uh, to the monitor power plug that's in this in this cabinet because <laughs> it is not isolated. It is not going through an isolation transformer and that's just bad news. So I'm gonna grab my uh, homemade uh, portable compact <laughs> isolation transformer monitor power supply. We'll set that up uh, over here. And uh, let's see, um, we need to go back onto the normal tripod. This is not the, I wish there was a quicker way to switch these things as I'm dropping stuff. All right, and that's the, uh, again, that's the isolation transformer power supply that I've built in a previous video. All the parts and everything you need to build one of your own are available in that video. So let's get set back up over here. Okay. And uh, yeah, let me grab, just double check that there's no wires in the way and I think we're good. I'll actually go ahead and put this cover back on that distribution block um, just so that we don't run the risk of anything touching those uh, open lugs. Okay, here we go. Let's see. All right. Pretty good there. Okay. So let's grab the monitor, which is over here. I'm going to be careful with these sharp edges as indicated by the Sharpie written on the cut frame. So gently lowering back in. Is that? Okay, that's probably fine, I think. Am I on something? Oh, okay. Uh, I think that's fine. Now, let's, uh, I don't want to see you. Uh, have you see me on my hands and knees? I'm just going to plug in. And I'm going to have to kind of do this by feel. <laughs> the, uh, oh man, the, um, the video connectors, there isn't a good like, way to see it. Okay, let's see. All right, I think, I think we're in business. I don't think we're touching anything that'll produce a bunch of heat. We grab the power connector. And we'll plug in. You probably can't even see what I'm doing now, can you? We'll plug in the power connector for the isolation transformer. And plug in the power cord. That snaps in place. And we'll just connect the ground wire to the chassis frame. We got our power cord here. All right. I will plug this in. And we'll get the tripod set up to hopefully see the game come on. There we go. That'll be a good view, right? Okay, first thing I'm going to turn the monitor on. So now the monitor is receiving power and I just plug the game in. We heard it come on. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, I think we're I think we're cooking. Let me coin up. Uh, we'll actually put two coins in and there's there's um, for whatever reason there's no lights on the coin reject uh, buttons and it doesn't look like there was any place to I mean there's obviously a space for it but there's no place to mount 
um, bulbs for that. There's no harness connection for it. And also, um, the, the volcano lights, uh, they only have two wires going to them uh, instead of three, so I don't think they'll light up. So we'll have to fix that at some point. All right, so that was the left coin slot. That's the right coin slot. Again, the volcano lights are not on, they're not flashing, as you can see right there. But uh, let's coin up and uh, test all the buttons. So I started a two player game. A right, left, up, down. And the left uh, button works. You've got to sort of recharge your weapon here. And the right button works. Let's kill ourselves. Okay. And the screen will flip for player two. So I'm coming over here on the other side. Left, up, right, down. Left button. Whoa, they got me. I have not tested the right button <laughs> of the player two side. So let's kill off player one again real quick after we get that cherry. Okay. This is interesting. <laughs> yeah, the monitor needs a bit of work. The geometry is a bit off. We got maybe a degaussing uh, issue. All right. Uh, and there's the right button. All right. Um, so yeah, we got, uh, we should probably cap this monitor. Like I said, it's got a discoloration on the right-hand side. I'm assuming that's maybe a degauss, degauss, degauss. Um, the monitor is a bit, the picture's a bit, um, the uh, vertical size is a bit off. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's working. So, uh, what do you want to do? Should we, um, I'll keep the I'll keep the top off, but um, should we set up to uh, maybe play a game or two for real? That might be fun, right? A little do run run action. All right, why don't we play a couple of games of do run run for real, not just to test out the uh, all right these buttons and everything. All right, I put two credits in, um, but I am just gonna start a one player game. And, um, you know, basically the object of Do Run Run is to clear each board and move on to the next stage. There's really two ways that you can do that. Uh, either by eliminating all of the uh, enemies on the screen or by collecting uh, all of the, uh, the dots. Uh, and if you sort of complete a, um, a complete circle or box around any set of dots, uh, it will turn those dots into the next level of bonus item, right? It starts at dots, it goes to cherries and other fruits, um, and basically go round and round and round and round them, and, and it and keeps increasing uh, the bonus uh, or the points that those collecting those things uh, is worth. So you'll see it once we start. Cool, one player game, here we go. So I'll start by going around, maybe try to create a hole box around the whole thing. Whoops, but I've huh, I already failed at that. As I retrace my steps and I touch the box. Whoops. Whoa. Don't want to get hit by any of these bad dudes. There we go. All right. There we go. And I can use that sort of um, whoa. I can use that uh, basically log to uh, kill a whole bunch of dudes at once. And now I've got these followers. And I will try to, I think if I kill the tail, and that ball will bounce until it hits something. There you saw me collect a lemon. And I think I am faster, oh shoot. <laughs> I'm faster at climbing up to the next level platform than the enemies are. So sometimes the enemies get faster than me and um, they can catch up. But I'm faster at uh, going up and down the level, like the platforms than they are. So that's a way to sort of, uh, oops. 
That's a way to. Uh, that's a way to get away from them. There we go. I've up I think those are lemons now. Let's see how high I can get them. So I've just got this one guy left. I'm still on the first board. I think they're getting mad. Uh, he's now a faster enemy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was user error, not paying attention. Let me just collect these and get out of here. Um, and yeah, the game just sort of uh, goes from there. It gets progressively more difficult. Uh, I think my high score is a bit over 50,000. Here we go, and I collected all of the items and uh, cleared the board. Now we're on scene two. Sort of stay out of their line of attack here. There we go, and I hit the bonus. Oh, I almost hit the T right away, and I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I think if you kill the tail of that conga line of bad guys. It'll uh, kill all of them. And there's a bit of um, an interference or something with the uh, with the monitor. There we go. Got all of the rest of them. And I've just got this snake left. One of those tomatoes or pumpkins that I'm picking up. Um, yeah, my high score is about a bit over 50,000 on this game. And uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. It's sort of like... I don't know, a combination of, uh, and there, you kill all the enemies to clear the board too. To me, it's sort of like a combination of, I don't know, Pac-Man and uh, Dig Dug, right? And uh, Mr. Do a little bit, obviously. Whoa, walked right into him. I got one more credit though. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of fun. And I think, I think people uh like this game and i don't think it's necessarily that popular certainly or common certainly and it doesn't have a high score save on it certainly nowhere near as common as uh mr do or the other uh you know uh mr do or mr do's castle right or mr do's wild ride and the if you see the sort of um uh, uh high score initial entry is almost like a really elaborate uh gearbox <laughs> for a manual transmission car. You just sort of move over to the letters and uh, that's it. So let's start another game and I'll try to play a little bit better this time. Where is the start button? Right there, okay. Um, yeah, let's go for a better score on this one. Oops. Immediately I screw up. There we go, killed two at once. Um, so yeah, I think this should be a relatively relatively simple uh, fix uh, to turn this back into a dig dug, right? Uh, like I said, I've got an untested board, uh, which is hopefully okay. And uh, I'll get a JAMA harness, and I'll get uh, a JAMA um, PCB uh, um, adapter for the PCB so I can run that on a JAMA harness. We'll rotate the monitor back to horizontal. Obviously, we'll, we'll cap the monitor. Um, we'll cap the monitor. There we go, look at that. I also think there's a mechanic where if this button bounces a whole bunch of times, or the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, your weapon, like the the rubber ball, bounces a whole bunch of times. It will um, see instead of like if I shot it directly at him, it would have been only 500 points. But because I bounced it off the wall once, it was a thousand points. And I think if it keeps bouncing, um, like let's do this. So now it's going to bounce until it hits somebody. 
uh, I think it'll be a lot more than a thousand. I think it'll go up to three thousand. And I've also got a different. There we go. And I kind of ruined it by walking into it after all that, right? Um, there we go. That was a thousand. Like I said, I think I can get it up to three thousand by bouncing enough. But I'm trying to uh, go for a better score now. Oh my goodness! That's what I get for not paying attention. But yeah, um, and then cosmetically, really all we have to do is, um, and it'll stay down there, I guess, in the valley. Um, cosmetically, we got to figure out that overlay uh, and uh, see if we can get that reproduced either locally or, um, there we go. Locally or, um, you know, an actual um, artwork reproduction shop. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone currently doing any of this style of... Uh... There we go. There we go. Two of them. Um, I don't know if there's anyone doing this style of um, Atari cocktail... Uh, underlay artwork, but uh, if there is, you know, there is an art file available, and uh, um, you know, maybe if I send them the art file, they'll do it. Who knows? Especially if they're already doing, you know, other kinds. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to get away. Yeah, I got the down to one. <laughs> um, but I think while I'm trying to figure that out, you know, since this is a working game, I might kind of just let it be a, uh, a do run run. Right, while I'm figuring all that stuff out. Now, obviously, I want to um, figure out the monitor situation, and I'll cap the monitor, and uh... come on, where's my rubber ball? I don't think I have one. I don't think it's coming back. I think maybe you have to like energize it by picking up all those pellets. Maybe that's how you give yourself a uh, rubber ball. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, look at that. Um, uh oh, I'm sort of trapping myself now. Whoa. Look at that. All right. So yeah, maybe I'll uh, sort of leave this as a, uh, a do run run while I'm figuring out my plan of attack for the uh, dig dug. Yeah. Uh, like I said, obviously I'll cap the monitor and I'll fix the sort of power nonsense issues. Um, you know, I'll Whoa, that was a close call. Um, I'll get an isolation transformer in here and I'll sort of, I'll add a switch and I'll kind of um, build a basic power setup. I'll probably do a video about that. Um, that's with, uh, you know, an ISO and then we got the switching power supply already and I'll put a fuse and that's another thing. This cabinet has no fuses. <laughs> no switch, no fuses. No isolation transformer. It's a it's a miracle uh, this thing was working, but uh, it is, and that's great. And so, while I'm figuring out my game plan uh, for you know deconverting it and restoring it back to a dig dug, which is what I want, you know, ultimately, um, I can enjoy it as a working. Uh, 
Let's see. Am I going to beat my high score? Nope. Well, I might actually. I still have a life. Um, I can enjoy this as a working uh, do run run uh, while I while I oh I did not beat my high score because <laughs> I was talking and not paying attention but uh, yeah again while well, I'm finish my sentence while we figure out the game of attack plan of attack for deconverting and restoring this back to a dig dug I can enjoy a working uh, do run run cocktail machine so that's the nice thing about you know a lot of people are turned off by deconversion projects because yeah, sometimes it's hard to find, you know, all the parts and everything you need to uh, restore them. Um, but if you buy them as working uh, conversions, you can enjoy the uh, converted game. Let's just, there we go. Stop that sound from, from going. You can enjoy them as a working conversion, enjoy that working game while you're uh, restoring it. So um, yeah, I think this will be, uh, be a lot of fun. Interesting game for sure, and and Dig Dug is one that's been on my wish list uh, for a while, which is why I grabbed that uh, untested uh, PCB for a good price not too long ago. But uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap the video up here. Um, I know I've done a couple of uh, pickup videos back to back, and I like to spread them out a little bit, but I uh, had a really, really, really busy week at work this week, so I wanted to knock out a video in just one day, and a pickup video is great for that. So I want to thank... Uh, Everybody who watched this video, really appreciate that. Uh, if, uh, if you really like the video, please hit that like button, it really helps me out. If this is your first time, consider subscribing. And if you really, really like the video and all the content that I'm producing, uh, think about becoming a Overtime Arcade channel member. Hit that join uh, button down below. You'll learn about all the exclusive perks available only to Overtime Arcade channel members. Uh, you get early access to new videos. Typically, these videos come out Sunday afternoons. Uh, channel members get to watch them on Saturdays, which is great. Uh, you also get uh, a monthly members-only live stream. We'll be doing our next one coming up uh, relatively soon, I think. And uh, you get access to our members-only private Discord channel, which we, where we have a lot of fun, you know, uh, shooting the breeze and talking about games and working on them and playing them and picking them up and that sort of thing. And I give, you know, lots of... Uh, Lots of insight into what I'm working on and what's going on behind the scenes of the channel. So yeah, if you're interested in checking that out, it's a great way to support the channel. Uh, so click on that join button down below to learn more about that. So uh, with that, I think I'll wrap it up. Um, as always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade. I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.